Hello and welcome to the Interface with Hindus podcast to make sense of the accelerating pace of change underpinned by technology. I'm your host John Xavier. In today's episode, I'm joined with Real Me's head of uh, global product marketing, uh, Francis Wong, uh, to uh, give a lot of insights around what's happening on smartphones, what are the different tech changes, and what are some things to expect in terms of AI and other features within the smartphones. So Francis thanks for taking the time out. Uh it's been a a, a great morning today. How are you today? Very good. Nice to meet you John and uh, I'm happy to be interviewed by you. Great. So Francis I want to hit off uh, from where we started off earlier today mm-hmm. on uh, Realme starting off with the super fast charging technology. Could you give a sense on uh what kind of led the team to build something around smart charging and this whole infrastructure uh so uh, like realme has been always been consistently looking at what kind of uh, technologies and innovations we can bring to the consumers where well, there are a few things we are good at for example in the early days we launched uh, one of the few phones with the best uh, processors in india then later on we were the first brand in india who launched uh, the 64 megapixel camera phone uh, cord cord camera phones then uh another thing which we found out we are really good at is to bring the fast charging phone like we were one of the few brand launched the 65 watts in the early days uh then it was uh, 100 watt 150 watt uh 240 watt so till today we were still world's number one smartphone brand in terms of uh, making the fast charging phones so we want to keep leading in that area So we put the all of our resources and uh, we decided to launch 322. So the main purpose is that we want to keep our position in terms of the fast charging because now the competition has become furious. In the future we believe there are few areas that Realme should keep its leading position. One is in fast charging, another is in the AI, and then is on the camera. So those are the three areas we're going to focus a lot. Right. So how do you see this evolution of chargers with the charging adapter going out of the box right most phone uh, makers are not adding charger uh, bricks into the box uh, and how different is this phase of uh, charging by say hardware uh, going to change in terms of market uh, i think uh, when when you are launching uh, the faster charging one of the biggest uh, brick is that uh, the size of the charger were significantly become bigger right so when at the early days when we were developing the 320 watt we found out the biggest challenge is to keep the charger as the way it is it has become significantly bigger so if we don't adapt the new materials if the industry didn't improve on that front then maybe today's charger will be even like even bigger than a phone so that that is basically not useful to anyone so i think because of the existence of the new uh materials and, and the new techniques used then we were able to uh put the charger in the smaller size well i think now because we have a big trend of to become more uh environmentally friendly so now more and more brands are started uh, not to give in the chargers inside the box i think from the uh on the front of protecting the environment it is certainly a good thing to do Uh, every brand should follow the trend on another side we need to ban- ba- balance the demands of the consumers right so i think if realme is going to join the trend we're going to start doing it from the higher end phones because for the lower end phones like c series note series those are the for the users with basic demands they are they are someone who been uh working a lot on the outside charger is needed for them and it will be expensive for them to buy a new charger so we will try to at least satisfy their demands and now uh, when more and more users started using the smartphone using the when most of them have a charger at their home then we can start for joining the trend and start cutting the chargers inside the box right how do we look at the idea of let's say smartphone users who are using mid mid segment phones or budget phones who are switching to chargers like super fast charging how what kind of an impact would that have on their smartphones uh, performance and longevity of the phones and how should uh, that uh, gap in information be addressed i think uh, one of the big uh, pain point for today's consumer is that 
when they are uh, going back home, uh, the first thing they do is char to charge their phone, right? And uh, some, sometimes they charge the phone when they are sleeping, which most of the consumers think is not safe for them, right? So we want to let consumers say goodbye to charging. So to say goodbye to charging, we need to work on two fronts. One is we make bigger battery, like 7,000, 8,000 of the battery. So uh, let those batteries satisfy them for, two day, uh, for one day's use or even two days or three days use. Uh, another thing is we want to make the charging speed to become extremely fast so that you don't even fear that you are charging. So now with the uh, 320 watt, you can charge the phone within uh, four, four, four minutes, uh, four minutes, 30 seconds. So with that kind of time, you can charge the phone when you're brushing your teeth. So it's really convenient for the consumer. So eventually we want everybody to start using the fast charging phone. So that but charging well, becomes the thing that they, they don't need to Right, but how uh, should, uh, that should also have a capability from the smartphone side. Yeah. So if, uh, because when, uh, earlier in the presentation, so just for the viewers to know that uh, this morning uh, Realme announced uh, the 320 watt fast charging capability which uh, enables a smartphone to charge in under 5 minutes, about 4, four minutes 30, 30 seconds. So that's the point on which we're discussing. Uh, during the discussion, Clutch was also talking about uh, how the foldable batteries where uh, in terms of you know uh, how do you split the battery into four different parts and then power them up yeah so the adapter also has a compatibility with that kind of a battery now if you were to look at any other battery that you're using right now those batteries are not built the same way as the one that we yeah. saw earlier today yeah so how will that have an impact on the phone if we were to use that fast charger uh if if you use that uh, if you use the same charger for the battery which is not designed for that charger, then you will not be able to enjoy that kind of speed because the power output is significantly fast from the charger uh, itself. However, your battery won't rece receive it because they are, I I the chipset itself will block the, the input so that you won't be able to get that kind of speed. Right. Yeah. That, that's So I think that kind of limits the battery from taking the full potential of the charger. Yeah, yeah. So okay. basically, uh, if we want to uh, democratize the fast charging, then it will take maybe uh, even two years from now so that everybody started using the fast charging phone. It's a, it's a long journey. I don't think we can achieve that within one day. Maybe within one year, most of our GT phones will be equipped with this kind of fast charging. However, if we want it to be adapted to a phone below uh, 10,000 rupees, then I think it will take two to three years. Right. So I'd like to take a step back from the charging part and then go more into the phone's experience. So how have AI features uh, being used, uh, how, how, are, how are smartphone companies looking at AI features to go into the handsets? Uh, what's the experience so far and what are something that we could expect in the coming years? Yeah, I think uh, from the currently most of the brands are working on two front for the AI. One is the, they're using AI to improve the uh, camera performance, right? Uh, because in the past of five to 10 years, every brand is focusing on the hardware, right? So mostly they are using higher pixels of the camera that are using the larger sensor. However, from what we can see right now, we already have 200 uh, megapixel of the camera. You, you want to be having 300, 400 uh, anytime soon. So the hardware improvement has reached a limit. It has to rely on the AI. Well, the, the, the essence of AI GC is AI GC can generate something, right? So when we're putting it on the camera, AI GC is actually generating those missing pixels. For example, we have launched a AI night vision camera with GT6. How it works is because when it was shooting a video in the night environment, there will be a lot of missing pixels because the camera hardware cannot capture those pixels in the dark environment, right? So uh, what AI do is AI smartly calculate those pixels and add it into your picture so that it looks more clear. Same, same techniques we've been using on the 13 Pro Plus. So when you're taking a blurred picture, those missing pixels will be uh, uh, added by the missing uh, by the AI. 
So I think on the camera front, uh, AI can work a lot. That is also one of the areas Realme is working on. Where another front, which other brand has been working a lot is, for example, they're using AI as a tool for the translation. Uh, they are, they are uh, collaborating with ChatGPT to uh, let your phone smartly understand what you want. I think to improve the efficiency of communication, to, uh, to empower the smartphone to do, to do more tasks, that is even bigger and more challenging task for every smartphone brand. To put, uh, to use AI for camera is easier, but to use AI to empower the phone to become a more capable tool, that is something bigger. That is a task that I don't think any smartphone brand can singly finish it. It will be collab collaboratively the work for the whole industry. I think the final direction of AI smartphone will be that in the future, uh, the smartphone will even become uh, your personal assistant. It understands all of your uh, intention, it talks to you. For example, right now, when you are talking with ChatGPT, right, it basically can talk with you like a friend. It understands everything. It's like a ma master of no knowledge. Right? I think that is the final direction what smartphone will become. Smartphone itself is a hardware. AI is a software. Software and hardware has to work together. Then it becomes the final tool for the human beings. I think that's the final direction. Smartphone will eventually become the biggest entrance for every AI future. Right. So that, that uh, so we are starting with cameras and then gradually moving into other areas in terms of AI features. Yeah. So from here, I'd like to go into another segment, uh, largely talking about flagship smartphones yeah. as they are evolving. So there's this growing trend that the price of flagship phones are becoming expensive gradually, while the price of laptops and uh, devices that are tablets are dropping down. How do you explain this thing? You know what, what's happening? I think uh, uh, one thing is because uh, uh, for any of those uh, consumer electronics, for electronic products, it's uh, easier to make them in the big way, but it's a small more challenging to make it, make them small. For example, on the smartphone, now we have a three nanometer or four nanometer of the processor, very small, tiny size. To build that kind of processor, you need a lot of uh, equipment to uh, do the production. Where on the, on the laptop, the, the processor is significantly larger. So it's still like seven nanometer or six nanometer. So the processing uh, challenges are different. So Right now, if we look at the smartphone, the cost of the processor can account for maybe 30% to 40% of your OEM cost. Uh, and uh, on a smartphone, there are more of the uh, infrastructures and uh, uh, suppliers involved. For example, you need to have camera suppliers, display suppliers, uh, processor suppliers. So every, every single part of memory suppliers so every single part is adding to the cost, so it becomes expensive. And uh, another thing is, today if we look at a laptop, uh, it's not involving like smartphone. Smartphone is still fast involving. Uh, laptop hasn't been involved involving in the past two to three years. I think uh, that's why the cost is different. However, if if we look at the uh, PC, the personal computer, right? For those gamers. They buy the computer, professional computer for gaming or for the, uh, uh, for the computering or for the high performance, uh, high performance one. It, it is very expensive, still very expensive. So depending on everyone's needs. Right, that's, yeah. that's interesting. So uh, the, the last part that I want to focus more again is the fast charging. So given that we've touched the 320 watt, when do we see this in terms of commercialization and how will this drive costs? Whether, because given that this is going to also involve a lot of money in terms of purchasing, uh, what's the next step in the 320 watt? Yeah, I think uh, 320 watt right now, uh, within one year, I don't think uh, the industry can launch, for example, 400 watt because. Uh, one thing uh, is that when you are having a 320 watt of the charging, the battery size will be limited. Right now, as for our calculation, 
if if there is a 320 watt of the charging, then the battery will be between 4,500 4, to 5,000. Uh, 5, so the battery is not big. If we want to make the battery even bigger, then uh, bigger charging and bigger battery, the safety will be uh, in danger. So we don't want to have that kind of uh, risk for the consumers. Then we need to balance. If we want to launch a 400 watt of the uh, charging, then the battery will be even lesser than 4,000. So then a, a, a smartphone with less than 4,000 of battery, nobody will gonna buy it. So I think the biggest uh, challenge, the technical challenge right now is we need to balance the speed of charging with the size of battery. So smartphone brands are working towards two direction. One is to have a big ba battery phone, one is to have a fast charging phone. For Realme, we have both. We have a 320 watt in ready. We have 7,000 battery phone in the development. So both are ready, but to launch them together, combine them in one phone, that's something we haven't achieved yet. No brand have achieved that yet. So I think, uh, the future will be 7,000 mAh and a fast charging, fast charging phone. phone. Yeah, but that I think will take at least two to three years. So brands cannot achieve them both. The technical challenges are the same for the whole industry. So I think the next step for Realme is that uh, on the GT series, on our flagship phones, put the fast charging. Let uh, 240 or even 300 to be launched and commercialized. On the C series, no series, try to launch big battery phones. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. It's been a, a pleasure meeting and Thank you, John. talking to you. I hope that you all would have uh, enjoyed this show on how Francis took us through the whole evolution of smartphones and also what's going to happen in terms of both the battery capacity and the fast charging. Uh, for more such episodes, do tune in to the interface, uh, which comes out weekly. Thank you for watching.